It is a totem smash kind of day. Welcome back everyone. Minecraft Bedrock Edition has just entered a brand new beta and preview cycle. This is the version 1.20.80. Point 20. That means version 1.20.70 will be releasing very, very soon. But guess what? Today, in this video, we have some news about hardcore mode for Minecraft Bedrock Edition. However, a note was left on the official changelog saying, Known issues. Players are unable to connect to preview realms on Xbox One and PlayStation 4 in this version. I'll tell you one thing. It feels good to make preview videos and I can say it's available on iOS, Android, Xbox, and PlayStation. We just need this on Switch and that's it. Anyway, if you're new and you're a PlayStation player, hello. Getting into the experimental features, starting off with the vault. It says vault hit sound pitch corrected to match Java edition. They've also updated the vault visuals. Let's start with these new sounds. So, listen carefully. Apparently, the pitch now matches Java. They've also updated the texture. And the changes are to do with the top, but also the sides of this. Now, I'll put two pictures on screen right now of what the previous models look like. I'm still not the biggest fan of the texture. But it was updated again. We've talked about this quite a lot recently. But the trial chambers. They said trial chambers will now be placed in the same location and configuration as Java edition. That means if I was to go ahead and take this seed. And the seed for this world is 128020 to match the beta and preview version. If I was to go ahead and locate a trial chambers in this world. Type in the same seed on Java, it will be in the exact same location. Let's test that. So I found it on Minecraft Bedrock Edition. I'm also going to go ahead and copy my coordinate location. And we're just going to teleport to the same location on Java. Now, as you know, Minecraft Bedrock Edition is updating the UI. If you tap on edit in the new UI, go to advanced. You can actually copy the world seed now. So if it's a super long seed, it's easy to copy and paste. If I do forward slash TP at P and we go to this location, we should be inside of a trial chambers room. And we are standing on the exact same platform. So just to remind you, this is Minecraft Bedrock Edition, as you can see. And if we switch over to Java, they are the exact same. The rooms are the exact same. In the previous versions, they were kind of in the same location, but the design of the trial chambers was completely different. Now, this is really, really awesome going forward. It means future structures for both versions will be in the same place. Maybe they'll also update the previous structures to be in parity. This is great for seed finders. Getting into the most exciting announcement this week. Coming soon, Hardcore Mode. They said, we are excited to say we are working on Hardcore Mode for Bedrock Edition. And we hope it will be ready for testing sometime in spring. Hardcore Mode is a subcategory of survival where you only get one life and no chance to respawn. Not only that, in hardcore mode, the difficulty is locked to the highest setting. Now, for clarification, spring 2024 starts between Wednesday the 20th of March 2024 all the way up to Thursday the 20th of June 2024. So we could get this in a couple of weeks or it could be a couple of months. They then said, with such high stakes, we want to ensure we get hardcore mode right before releasing it into the retail version of Bedrock Edition. So once it goes into testing, it will stay in preview until we are confident the experience is smooth for both players and creators. We are also happy to announce when we are ready, hardcore mode will be available in realms for both Java and Bedrock. Hardcore mode officially announced for Minecraft Bedrock Edition. Now, judging by what it said there, it did say 
that it's locked to the highest difficulty, the hardest difficulty. So obviously on Minecraft Bedrock Edition, you can just go into settings, kind of cheat, go ahead and change it to easy if you wanted to. And players are not punished. Like one thing I would do back in the day is if I was having issues with too many mobs and farms, I'd have to set it to peaceful, go back into settings, go back into this and then change it to normal or into hard. It would be locked as the hard difficulty with no way to change it. I am incredibly excited by this, and I can confirm when it does get introduced, I will bring you a hardcore Let's Play. Let me know your opinions about this. So it is a couple of weeks or months away. It is coming in realms, but at least it's finally been announced. Features and bug fixes. Wolf armor. It says, since the initial release of the wolf armor, we have been working on improving it to increase its protection, usability, and add customization. For protection, there is a new approach to armor, which considers the player's need to quickly see the state of the armor without using UI elements, and the ability to act quickly to help their pet wolf if needed. Wolf armor has been de-experimentified and is now available during normal gameplay. Now, I'll explain this in a second. As you guys know, if you have damaged armor, you go in here, you can see it's damaged. Go to your farm, use mending, right? They've taken a very different approach with this. Now, as for this news right here, it is rumored that wolf armor and, in fact, the armadillos are not a 1.21 feature. And they, wolf armor... And armadillos will be introduced in 1.20.80 for bedrock and 1.20.5 for java which is quite an interesting take so you no longer need to turn on experimental to enjoy this feature moving on to just like java wolf armor can now be dyed so this is an interesting one here now you cannot what is bro doing in there are you good you cannot put this on a wolf. Grab yourself some dye like this. And then go ahead and tap on him and dye him, right? The only thing that changes is going to be his collar. Now, Minecraft Java Edition, you put this inside of here and this. And it does not work either. And that is because Bedrock Edition and dyeing wolf armor is the same as leather tunics. It has to be done inside of cauldron. So get a bucket of water, fill up a cauldron, tap on it. As you can see here, the colors are changing, which means you can then tap on this and it's going to change it. And it's super, super awesome. Now, remember, if you guys would like to take the wolf armor off, it has to be done with shears. But that is how it works on Bedrock Edition. Now, the cool thing here is just like leather armor, you can add multiple colors to get really funky designs. Please, please move. Um, so you can just mix and match. There is actually 5.7 million different combinations, I believe. So yeah, I like this. They got to introduce the whole cauldron situation and dying to Java edition as well. Now, let me start explaining to you how the protection of wolves now works. Wolf armor now acts as a shield absorbing most damage directed to the wolf the wolf armor now has 64 durability more cracks appear on the wolf armor as it takes more damage so let me grab myself a sword for example i'm also going to grab myself some shears here and just show you guys what i was talking about when it comes to players and how they're taking a different approach from needing to go inside of the inventory and stuff like that. So if I hit him, you can hear like a cracking sound, right? Now you can visually see the cracking effect on their armor. Do this a little bit more. Now I can shear this, take this from the wolf, and it will actually tell me that this is one hit away from being destroyed. But this gets even better because it says... But no worries, the wolf armor can now be repaired by using armadillo scoots on a sitting wolf. This is incredible. So I'm going to keep this on me, which is the damaged one from before. But I'm going to crouch and tap on him. You can see it's now being repaired. So if I take this off, you can see here it's starting to be repaired. As you can see, put it back on. We can fully repair it. 
So that means wolf armor can last for super, super long. Now remember, it absorbs the damage. You can always tell if a wolf is damaged or injured by its tail, right? So if I was to take this off, hit this wolf, you can see his tail goes down and he's injured. Him again, he's really, really low. In order to heal a wolf in Minecraft, you give them something like raw beef and you can see the tail goes all the way up. If the wolf has armor on, just fully repair this real quick, make him sit up and we keep hitting him, you can see the tail does not change because it acts as a shield as well as armor. The only time the wolf will take damage is once the armor is destroyed. And you can see here, he's starting to take damage once again. It is an incredible feature. Armadillos are such a useful feature. And I expect there to be a whole bunch of farms in the next Minecraft update. As it says, if the wolf armor is dealt damage beyond zero durability, it will break. But there are known issues. Wolves wearing wolf armor don't trigger post damage invulnerability, resulting in the wolf armor being rapidly destroyed by continuous sources of damage, such as lava slimes and magma cubes. So obviously, as you guys know, one of the big problematic things when it comes to wolves is they are very much vulnerable to lava. Now on bedrock condition, that's not meant to happen. It, it gets destroyed literally instantly, right? Java, that doesn't happen. That will be fixed. So for now, they're not really protected from fire or lava or mobs and stuff like that. They will probably just die a lot easier. But besides that, though, let's do another test right here. Now, I've got two wolves here. This guy, he's going to probably die, right? Yeah, it didn't quite die. But let's see, if we go all the way down here, his tail should be really, really low. Very, very low. If we do the exact same with a wolf that has armor on... Yes, the armor is going to take damage, which it did, but the tail is completely fine, which indicates that the wolf is also completely fine. What a very good day for wolves in Minecraft. A few other changes to wolves are the collars of tamed wolves are now properly shaded. We have a bug report. So it's been a problem in all of these versions. You can see here, this is what it's like on Java Edition. It has shading. And on Minecraft Bedrock Edition, it was just a plain color. So you can see here, there's now shading. You can see it. it's like a lot more shaded at the bottom compared to the top. And it's also the same for this guy right here. Wolves' tails are now correctly positioned when sitting. We have a bug report. Now, this is a long time issue. Going back to like 1.16, 1.7.1, 1.7, 1.8. Betas, you name it. It's been an issue for a very long time. And the position of a wolf sitting on Bedrock Edition has been completely broken and very disconnected. But as you can see, its tail is now completely attached and it looks normal again moving on to the armadillo the armadillo has been de-experimentified and is now available during normal gameplay remember this is coming in 1.20.80 breeding cooldown is no longer reset after roll up spiders and cave spiders now fear armadillos even when experiments are turned on so one of the features available for this is that if we have an armadillo and it's curled up these guys are not scared as soon as it uncurls these guys run away changes with blocks it says sweet berry bushes now drops up to six sweet berries when mined using a fortune enchanted tool so we have a forward slash game mode s here and we silk touch these now like this. This one produced three that time. Let's try it with a hoe. This one produced three as well. I want to try a hoe again. That one gave me, I think it's just two that time, right? But you can get up to six, apparently. Try an axe. Axe produced three. Come on. Gotta give us something more than that. Doesn't seem to give us a lot at once, but apparently that's what the change is. Fully grown coca pods now consistently drop three coca beans. Double slabs can once again be created when stacking two of the same slabs together. We have a bug report. So this was only a preview and beta issue, but you couldn't attach these together. And let's test this. So can we actually combine all of these together? Yes, this works perfectly fine in this version. Moving on to gameplay. 
fixed vertical position of tamed mobs from the client slash guest's perspective after they teleport to their owner. We have a bug report. So this one's quite funny. Been an issue since 1.17, but check this video out. So this player has wolves, right? He's taming them. He's obviously going to go from one location to another. And his friend is watching this happen in a split screen world, right? So we go down. Watch when the wolves teleport. <laughs> one of them is just floating in the air. It's a visual bug for the joined players. That was fixed today. Horses and boats no longer slide to unexpected previous locations upon mounting or dismounting. Realm stories and user interface. Let's read the change log. I don't currently have Realm Stories active, so I can't necessarily show you these changes. But for those of you that use Realms, Stories are available. It looks like these are just quality of life features to make Realms even better when playing multiplayer. And as you guys know, the UI, the user interface for Bedrock, is being updated. So they're just making tweaks to make life so much better for players. Moving on to graphical shaders changes. Partially fixed full block shapes. Example, redstone lamps, frog lights, glowstone, etc. That are marked as point lights in resource packs in a deferred technical preview. They can still be turned into point lights, but will not have occlusion shadows. Now, things are very bright this week, and I'll explain why in a second. Do forward slash, forward slash time set. We do midnight. I'll tell you what, though. They fixed some of these blocks, which is nice to see. Remember... Some of the frog light blocks were previously broken. So that is a nice change this week. But this week, they added a new feature to the lighting model in the deferred technical preview. It's the subsurface scattering. This effect approximates rays of light passing through translucent surfaces. For now, this feature is limited to only affect leaves. Now, let me just explain this a little bit here. So when the light is coming down it'll be able to pass through some of these leaves slightly. So you can kind of see it's really, really dark there, but it's really, really light here. So light can now pass through translucent blocks. Do forward slash time set and we do noon, for example. You can see it's much brighter here and a lot less further down. I hope I'm explaining that right. I'll show you guys some more images so you can see it. Shout out to Poggy for sending me these images, but check this out. It's getting so much better on Bedrock Edition. So let's use this one as an example. So underneath, it's still got a little bit of light coming through, but obviously the sun is coming from this angle. So the top of the leaves are going to be much brighter compared to the bottom. You have to turn on the latest shaders download to experience this and see it for yourself. A great way to see this is in the likes of your cherry groves or jungle biomes. And the final shaders change this week is they increase the contrast and saturation of the world in the deferred technical preview. That is why everything is incredibly bright. Now, I'm going to be honest with you. I don't like this. I'm in a swamp biome. It should be dark and gloomy and miserable. However, I do think the texture pack and shader pack creators do have access to this. So they can alter it to their own satisfaction. But I hope that Mojang know, like, just making everything brighter doesn't make everything better. I liked it the way it was previously, rather than this. And technical updates. Let's read the change log. So this week consists of changes to the API blocks cameras, components, editor mode, entity fields, Molang, and so much more. If you want the link to the change log, I'll leave it down below. So there we have it. A brand new beta and preview cycle has started for Minecraft Bedrock Edition. New update coming out most likely next week. Hardcore mode is well underway. Wolves are so much stronger. It's been a pretty good start to the year for Minecraft Bedrock Edition. If you made it this far, I want you guys to leave a comment down below and say, Hey Echo, what's that villager doing? Have a wonderful day.